Yep. Good evening, everyone. All right. Good evening, everyone. And a very, very warm, happy welcome. And the parent express is here. So today it's actually going to go on in a, on a absolutely very, very fast pace because there is so much to do in such little time. So my basket is ready. My resources are ready and we are ready to go. So get set, go. One, two, three. Understanding numbers is a very, very important. You know, you see. Bantu and Bablu, now where are the Bantu and Bablu? Bantu and Bablu go to the park. They always get home before it is dark. Mommy says to care and share. They have to share everywhere. Okay, so they take a packet, packet of biscuits to the park. To share biscuits is quite a task. How are they going to share it, can I ask? How will they know whether there is the biscuit is full or half? So. To share a biscuit also can be quite a task. They have one sandwich. Now, Bantu and Bablu are out in the park and they have one sandwich. And dividing it into two can also be a task. How are they going to divide it, may I ask? One day, they have many friends and just one apple. Sharing an apple with many friends can be quite a task. How are they going to cut one piece for each one and share it? May I ask? So, one bottle is full and one bottle is empty. How will this bottle be poured into a half? It can be a task. How are they going to do it? May I ask? Sorting things that are the same, comparing, comparing things, it's not an easy game. Some things are big and some things are small. Some friends are short and some friends are tall. Less and more is also what they have to know. Few and many also they have to show. Shapes and lines all around. My God, numbers and numeracy in everything can be found. And that's what we need to bring alive with children. You know, we just teach them numbers and then we don't bring them alive. And I think that is the whole purpose of, you know, organizing this, this whole um, uh, event uh, based on this topic of numeracy. Now I have to tell you that I till today have a fear of numbers. If you give me a, a division sum, I can do addition, I can do subtraction. If you give, give me a division sum, my heartbeat goes up. But if I have to apply, I'm okay with it. So it's very, very important to allow application to come into the lives of these, uh, especially foundation. Many, many times children can solve a sum, but if you give them a simple, uh, you know, activity to do, they are unable to do it. So that's the reason why when you say numeracy, and when the NEP said numeracy, they did, they did a fantastic job. In that one word, they took away just the number counting, and they made it a wide expanse. It made it an expanse to understand. And like these Bantu and Bablu, right from the biscuits to the sandwiches to the roti to uh, getting out things, sorting. So all of this, a simple thing like a one-to-one -one correspondence. How can you use it at home? I'll give you small examples. Obviously, you know, I have a lot of things around me. So sometimes there may be a little clutter here and there. But please don't. You know, every night you'll, you'll lay tables up, katori, chamach, thali, sab lagate hai na? So just put enough katoris, uh, you know, normal katori. I'm using glass. You can use your steel katori. And tell the children, okay, now put one spoon in one bowl. So one for everyone. Right? So the simple 
simple activity of one to one, one for everyone, can get taken care in such a simple way at home. You are putting things on a clothesline. You put it little at the bottom and say, put one clip on every sock. Uh, you can uh, during your prayers go and distribute one to everyone, right? Uh, so there's so many ways to do this at home and make this one to one correspondence come alive. Very simple to do. Sorting, you know. So next activity could be sorting, sorting of vegetables, sorting of fruit, sorting of little things. I would even say something like sorting of simple things like, you know, you have these disposables that come. Say, okay, sort out the forks and the spoons. Now, once you sort out the forks and the spoon, can you sequence them? Can they be one fork, one spoon? One fork, one spoon. Can you do two forks and two spoons and then two forks again? Can you do two forks and one spoon and two forks again? So you're sorting, you're sequencing, you're creating patterns. Alu, alu, piyas, piyas. Alu, piyas, alu, piyas. Alu, piyas, alu, piyas, tomato. Alu, piyas, tomato, mirchi. So even something like that can get you your pattern. So much, much before that you have created a whole book learning concept, you can do all of these activities at home. All these are listed as a part of your parent guides. Please open them, read them. We've given you a couple of resources. The resources that we've given you are video resources which will help you to use the flashcards and the board games, etc. given with the books. But if you're not doing that, at least use all of this to actually take things forward with the children. Uh, these are simple activities which make application very, very important. Another very easy thing to do with all the um, uh, activities is uh, to do a lot of stories while explaining concepts to children. It works like magic, you know, because um, they enjoy listening to the story and while listening to the story, you introduce a concept to the child. They definitely enjoy it. So you have to do one-to-one -one correspondence. You have to do sorting. You have to do patterns. So I'll do a story for one-to-one -one correspondence with you just to help you understand how, you know, we can... Uh, even use digital uh, application and make it into an interesting little story. Popo the parrot is a little green parrot. He has many friends. One day, they all go out to find food. Popo flies here and there. He feels tired. He sees a big mango tree. He loves to eat mangoes. He sees one yellow mango hanging from the branch. He is very hungry. He wants to eat the mango all by himself. He plucks the mango and is ready to eat it. Suddenly, he remembers his friends. He takes the mango to his friends. All of them share one juicy yellow mango. They have a lot of fun. Popo the parrot is a... Okay, so something like this can... Add, the other activity that you can do with this is tell, cut the mango into many pieces and then give one piece to each person. Something as simple as chana. You know, from your kitchen, take it and use an ice tray and put one in each um, of the little sockets. Um, gradually put two in each. So your division will happen. Your one-to-one -one will happen. Your So each of these little things is a concept that the child is actually absorbing. So if you can do these activities with the children, nothing like it. The children will always, always remember and they will absolutely. So I don't know whether we give certificates. And somebody is asking that we haven't received the certificate. I don't think we are giving certificates for the parent. Your best certification are your little children. I don't know what else you need. So uh, these are little things which I feel are so important in the sense that you can um, use them so many times. We've given you resources. Please download it. I'm seeing a whole list of resources going. 
Uh, they're very, very beautifully made resources. They're really going to help you. When you teach shapes to children, you know, like I did sorting. So you do sorting with shapes and then give them this, give them the task of little folding. Jitne ghar ke napkins hai, whatever you have. So tell them that today you need to fold your napkin into neat squares. So I would like all the napkins today put into, this is daily work, your hand keys, your thing. So bring them into life skills. The next day you say, okay, today um, we need to do the triangular fold. So today all our napkins will be in a triangular fold. The third day, tell them that I would want them to be in a rectangular fold. I would want, you know, two sides long and two sides short. And little, little things like this will make the shapes come alive and actually do a little job in the house. That is why it was not just about doing numeracy about how you teach numbers to children, but how to pick up each concept and actually bring it into the daily, um, uh, you know, um, rhythms of the children's life, right? So uh, a bottle that is full and a bottle that is empty. Do they look the same or do they look different? So even something as little as this. Now, can you open the bottle? First of all, can you weigh the bottle for me? So is it heavy or light? So you can actually have a little game where you can close the child, tell the child to close their eyes. Put the, don't blindfold children, please. Just allow them to close their eyes. And then say, oh, can you say which one is heavy and light? So that whole concept that you teach as three number concepts becomes as simple as this. Measurement. The little children can actually, anybody who says it's not audible, please check your connections because these connections have been checked. I just check your connection space. So how do you teach them measurement? So this is full. Pour it really carefully and stop when it is half. Another very, very important thing that you can do is if you feel that two different things cannot get them a comparison, see to it that they use the same type of a bottle. Right? So that will help children to definitely um, understand and connect. So something like this teaches them measurement. Something like a simple thing like putting the lids back teaches them the, the, the connection and the, uh, you know, uh, the process like this. So do activities like this. Do a full bottle, half bottle, one-fourth bottle, quantity. So that is what will make the children, you know, understand the whole value of what we are doing uh, as a concept on a page. And how can we use it in real life? You know, so try and do that. Something even like mixing a lemonade, you know. So put two spoons of sugar and put half a glass of cold water, half a glass of uh, normal water and then stir it and then divide it into two halves. Uh, why is it that, uh, why, is it, uh, why is it that it's not uh, audible? Um, any of the teams listening to me from the Oxford uh, teams, uh, is the voice not audible? Uh, is it is it a comfortable um, 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 voice? Can you all hear me? It's quite clear, ma'am. It's quite clear. Then I think it is also to do with the connections of, you know, whoever is handling this. All right. So small things like this are so important. Uh, you know, when you when you want children to count, everybody at home must have these little bead malas. It is very important. Please get bead malas for your children. This has got a bead set of 100. So you have the big bead malas. And then I, I have put all the things around me to be able to reach out fast. This is a small bead mala. You know, this could be done at home. You could actually bring beads and string them with the children and use it as a counting tool. So your tens and ones, you're counting up to 100. All that can be done so beautifully with a simple activity like this, right? So please do this because this is a very, very important mathematical tool, which is so easy. Plus will help the children to, you know, do the small muscle development and to uh, have a counting string with them all the time. Uh, these are also ready-made and very ready available. Another thing that I use a lot is Bamboo. This is very, very old bamboo. I mean, I've been using it for years as my teaching, uh, in my teaching career. Uh, I had gone to the East and there, they did not, and uh, there was a particular place where they did not use plastic. And at that time, beads were not really available. 
So what we did was we just cut up the uh, bamboos and I remember this is, you know, that electricity tape, you know, we thought of nickel, it's a little gone old, but this must be at least about 15, 20 years old. And I have it in all the four colors of the electricity tape, you know, so I have it. Even the poor plastic looks so old. It's that old. So there were two things that, you know, I, I did as a teacher. One is I never throw away uh, anything just for the sake of, um, you know, just throwing it away and saying, oh, this doesn't look nice. As long as it is storing my resources, I'm fine with it. And this is natural resources. So please, if you don't want to use plastic, you know, when we used to go to Punjab and to go to other places, there were so many times when people actually went to and we cut PVC pipes. You know, the waste pipes are cut in the waste pipes. Normally, we used to do threading. Finally, the concept is to get the uh, counting right. So we don't have to worry about how expensive the resource is. The counting should be correct because concrete counting is essential for children. You know, we make them write 111, 112, 113. What does that mean? It's meaningless for the children. 7 and 3, 73 has no meaning. So please allow concrete work to uh, come into you, the children's lives. It works beautifully. You know, when the children are playing, normal uptick, uh, you have these little, uh, these are all stuff which I, you know, I have stored from um, um, when I used to be a teacher. So just the counting. So you do the tens and do one more. Do ten and two more, three more, four more. And then the most interesting thing is you make it equal to ten. So take your um, um, uh, your blue uh, blocks and take the red blocks and then say, okay, now you have how many of these? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many more would you make me to make 10? So let's try and add another color. So we, we took seven, eight, and nine, and 10. So... Six and four make ten. You can make totals of ten like this. Two and eight make ten. One and um, nine make ten. Seven and three make ten. Five and five. So you can just use the normal blocks that your children have at home and create this total up to ten. So your entire addition up to ten gets taken care of with something as simple as this, right? So it's all about just creating a process of, and not restricting yourself, saying, oh my God, this can't work or this won't work. No. All these things will work so beautifully. Same and different. I just picked up these bottles and say, okay, sort out the one that is different. Now sort out all the ones that are same. In the same four bottles, I will do same and different with the children. So it, it works, right? It works beautifully with them. Uh, <clears throat> you know, when, when I started this whole design of, of, you know, my learning chain, I did two very important things. I said, it's loads of stories. Let's have stories and stories and stories. And let's have concepts going into the stories. I thought that worked beautifully. So you had this. And if you notice my wall over there, everything in blue is a story for Mac. So lots of stories, you know, you can do even that lovely Akbar Birbal story about where, you know, there was a line drawn and then Akbar tells Birbal that now you, without touching this line, you have to make it shorter. So then the, the Bible draws a longer line and it becomes shorter. So these kind of stories are actually bringing the wonder of math alive. You can do it when the children are playing outside. So don't leave a chance to do all of this. Recognition of numbers. First chapter counting. Very, very important, you know, that concrete counting. So I'm going to do it in two ways. Uh, I uh, the, the first one, the first one could be your fingers. Why do you think the little babies, uh, nursery children, we don't give them counting beyond 10. Let's, let me talk about that. Because how many fingers do you have? Two eyes. One nose. Very easy to make out. They will not, they'll be able to understand five well. Ten well. Two well. One well. Why? Because these are concrete things they see. That is why up to nursery, please allow us to introduce only up to 10. The, our operations are all based on that, 0 to 9. And that is how nursery should be. Don't hurry them up. My children write 1 to 20, 1 to 30, big deal. It's not going to make any difference to their lives. But if they know the value of each thing, a small story, look at a train. I can see one 
rat. So one rat. So there are two ways I'm using this story. If it's a very small child, I will use just a rat picture. And if it's a slightly kg child or grown up, I can give them sight word reading as well. So he sees one rat. So everybody show me one finger. And then the rat says, can I take a ride on the train? And then he goes, chuk, 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 chuk. So not only is the child listening, the child is counting, the child is doing a body movement. And then he sees two horses. So I can see two horses is what a KG child will read. And repetitive reading of sight words will happen while you're doing a math. Now show me two fingers. And I can see three cows. So show me three fingers. One, two, three. And four goats. So one, two, three, four. And five ducks. So one, two, three, four, and five. So in something as simple as this, I taught them the counting up to five with simple movements and very, very interesting uh, activities, you know. Uh, Bright School is exactly teaching like this. Oh, yes, I know that. Yes, some of the school, uh, the kind of support systems they're creating for the children is amazing. Uh, I also want all the parents and the teachers here to see, you know, that these are little kits that are being given to you, which have been created especially during this time for it to become useful for all of you. Uh, I think the Oxford University Press, we created a kit for teachers to teach your children with 417 printable pages. They, they have everything, stories, they have these beautiful big posters so that we can make the child. So digital learning, very important. At the same time, to create this whole hands-on space is very, very important, right? So I'm just going to give you um, one and now counting in individual. And then what I have created is this little bundles of 10. So the first bundle of 10 is created with your own fingers and hands. Okay. So you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And make a bundle. I think that's how beautifully it can be done. Uh, for all the teachers who are saying that they're doing this, we now need to make this a reality with parents. You know, so that the parents also assist the child to do all of these activities in a very, very nice fashion. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is at the, the counting and number building I just do towards the end is the use of the math vocabulary. Math has a huge vocabulary. <laughs> Division. Uh, I, will, I will read out just a few words to you, okay? And just see how, how what is the expanse? So you have empty, uh, full, in, out, one, many, few, on, under, near, far, less, more. And these are just things which you can use every single day. So if you're math, be conscious of the math vocabulary. Use it in a conscious fashion and let the children understand the use of it in not only in language, but to actually go and pick up an empty thing, pick up a full thing, go near a thing, come away from it. it. It is a beautiful time to help children understand the vocabulary and the meaning of math. Lot of stories, lot of concepts. And now we do two uh, activities which I feel are very, very important for number building. So numbers from one to nine is what the children have, chota cards. What I'm using are the bigger cards so that the visibility is there for you. Okay, so I made a set of cards. I made just a, um, a package and kept it ready so that I could do the number building with you right here in front. But the videos have been given to you. The videos are there with you. In case you download them, it will be such an easy thing. Otherwise, uh, they are, uh, you can access them on, uh, I think, some of the OUP uh, websites as well, right? So suppose I want to do the number 11. So the first thing I do is I do 10 and 1, 11 with dots. So there is a strip of 10 and one dot. And then I take it and I give it a place value of 11. So the child sees 10 and 1 and doesn't see 1 and 1. This is an important activity. You can do it with small cards. Now suppose I want to do 21. I can make 21. Or I want to do, you know, 32. So I do 30 and I do 32. So please remember that the place value and the value of the numbers is very, very important for children to do. And number building is a very important skill that we definitely 
would like your children to do with us. So suppose you're going to get them to do number and you're going to do uh, 11, 12, 13, 14. Please don't say 1 and 1, 11, 1 and 2, 12. It's a terrible way of teaching any concept of mathematics to children at all. Just don't do it. Uh, there's somebody who's raised their hand if the team could just help them up. So what we did instead was get children to count these individual uh, cards. Now, where are these little flashcards coming, uh, cards coming from? You can either cut the cards or in the books you have flashcards. So around the books you have certain strips of paper. Those actually can be taken out. I'll just show them to you. So if you're using, if you're using um, uh, the books, please notice that behind it, you have these flashcards. And below and on the side, you have strips like this, strips of paper, which you can just tear and put into a bowl. And then you can tell the children to count 10 strips and put a rubber band around it. So every 10 strips, the children put a rubber band. And how they put a rubber band is that they will, so how they count is a single hand count. Don't get them to use both the hands. So you have to put your things and tell them to count one at a time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And every time you have a ten, you're going to make one bundle. So when suppose you're doing the number 20, so the child automatically picks up the number 20 and picks up two bundles of 10, so they know the concrete value. And suppose you're saying, okay, let me do the number 26. Okay, so first I build it with the uh, values. Then I say, okay, 26. So the child will pick up one, 10, 20, and six loose strips and say 26. And then on the other side, you say, okay, let's make 32. So the child picks up three bundles of uh, of tens and then picks up the loose uh, numbers. So what happens is the child on one side will see 20 as two bundles and three ones, or they can't hold all of them. And on 30, the child sees three bundles and whatever loose ones. So the child does not see big and small. The child sees more and less. And that is how Greater and lesser numbers also can be understood in big quantities, 76 and 54, 22 and 39. So do it uh, with a lot, just nothing. It is just card sheets, nothing big deal. So easily it is accessible to you, okay? Everything that we have suggested as a resource is a, is a resource which is just so easy. You want to get ice cream sticks, you're most welcome to. But if you don't get ice cream sticks, don't say, I can't do this activity. You can do it with chips of paper, right? So don't restrict yourself. Don't restrict your thoughts. Don't restrict the children. Please use flashcards. You know, like we've given you shape cards. Shape cards are great for patterns, for sorting, for a lot of other, other things that, you know, the children can do patterns, counting. So please use the flashcards. They say never put the flashcards away. That is the power of flashcards. Of course, flashcards and application into real life. So every topic you're teaching the children, please, please uh, <clears throat> see how much can you apply it in the environment. It's very important to do that, you know. Let them understand measurement. This is a meter. This is a foot. This is a hand span. This is a foot span. This is a finger span. Consciously do all of this. It will help them so much to understand and, you know, Develop a whole process around it. You know, like, for example, even when you're doing addition and subtraction, you can actually put numbers there, then put the sign, then put counting. Look, make it come alive for this child. So when you're doing addition, after that, give them addition of things around the house. Count how many shoes you have. Count how many, you know, just, just keep making it come alive. That's when application will actually happen. And this whole MEP is not a big story, please let me tell you. It's a very, very simple thing that they have asked us all to get together and do. And, uh, you know, the interesting part about the way we built numeracy many, many years back, see, when my learning chain happened, it was about eight years back. But we did it in the way that we would have wanted even today. 
So we are not rushing. We are not saying, oh, this has to change, that has to change. No, it doesn't. Because our base and foundation was so much based on what is needed. Not that, and the needs of the children, really, basic needs remain the same. So I remember when, you know, when uh, I, I did this course and I did activities and uh, things like that, a lot of people used to tell me, hum to 1 to 50 counting that there, we do counting up to 100, 200, 500. And uh, even the Oxford University press team would tell me, ma'am, what do we have to do? So I said, let's just do what is right for children. And they, they agreed, they stuck to it. And today, imagine the NEP is asking us to do exactly that. That don't teach them 500 uh, counting, just teach them how to pick up a, uh, you know, bead mala and count up to 100 and know if you say 32, they should be able to move 10, 20, 30, and 2. That's the speed we want. Another beautiful activity is to take a simple printout. This is a 1 to 100 ka printout. You know, you can take a printout, you can use our board games. Of course, our board games all have 1 to 100. But in case, by chance, if you don't have it, just take a simple printout. A4 size paper, hai, 1 to 100 numbers. Hai. And just take card sheet counters. Normal card sheet counters. Normal. Uh, you know, one one centimeter, one and a half centimeter by one centimeter ka counter hai. You can take it in many colors also if you want to. So you can do number identification. You can do what comes after. You put one counter on one number. Now I want you to put all the red counters on number 46, 48, 59. Okay, whatever. And now take the blue counters and put them on the number after it. Take the yellow counters and put them on the number before it. Put counters on every alternate number. Skip two numbers and put a counter. So this one to hundred strip, that's it. Aapka ek A4 size sheet hai. Normal jo aapka t-shirt, t-shirt ka polythene aata hai na. It's, it's just that. That thing else. And just cards. I just take colored cards. Normally ye, this is one color, but I take two, three colors. And then I do the entire thing, the skip counting, what comes after. Can you count what comes after a particular number? So I can do addition also. Can you do 4 plus 3 and show me? So one counter goes on 4 and then you move 3 steps and then you put it on 7. So it's all about everyday usage of simple things. I think that's what numeracy is all about. It's about skill building. It's about order. It's about addition. It's about creating um, awareness in children that the math from the book has to come into the math of the life. Beautiful calculations of life, very simple to do. And perhaps if we grow children like this, uh, they will grow into applying and, uh, you know, learning a little better. So please go through stories. Please go through the work we are giving you. Uh, we are also going to come up with something beautiful, which I must share with you is that uh, the, the 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 digital and marketing teams with the help of our wonderful, wonderful quiet editorial is putting together all the animations of my learning train to be available for you to see. But I don't want this to be a blind looking at animations. Use them to apply for something else. So it's going to be all made. So we are trying that the next few months that have to pass are made as easy, as simple for you as possible. And all these wonderful teams are bringing in their, you know, energies together, adding their energies and multiplying the learning for your little learners. So thank you very much. I hope the Parent Express was useful and you had a good, happy evening with me. Time to go now. Thank you. Thank you uh, to Purnima, Nancy, uh, Feroz and everybody uh, who's here. <coughs> helping us and uh, thank you all and we'll see you uh, we'll, we'll let you know when we are going to see you again uh, if you feel that uh, you know you want us to continue please write back to us also and let us know uh, if you find this useful or not thank you thank you the team can take over now please in case you have to uh, thank you all it's been a good happy session Thank you all. Thank you so much. You had a wonderful set of parents with us, teachers with us, and thank you all. Um, Nancy, will you all will you take over, um, or do I close this? Uh, do I close the session?
All right. So uh, I think the team will we'll just let the session keep running till you all can uh, download all your resources and then the team will uh, perhaps. So I will say bye bye to you and I hope to see you again. Please, please give us inputs if you want us to continue these sessions or you would want a break and we we'll continue it maybe after a month or so. So please let us know, write into uh, our teams and let us know. Thank you so much. Bye bye.